boom goes the dynamite. Or boom shakalaka boom. Either way you look at it, we're live here on the Clay Edwards Show. I'm, of course, Clay Edwards. This is the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. May I tell you what we really coined that phrase around here? All these guests, all these hosts, or all these hosts and their guests, uh, this is not politics radio. We do have to talk about some politicians, but I don't think political radio fights the culture war like we do. This is reality. These are the things we see in our day-to-day lives, the things that affect our children, the things that affect us. And hey, we like to have a good time, too. And political political radio folks, uh, traditional, your dad's, your dad's conservative talk radio, they don't like to have fun. They starch their whitey tighties. We don't do that here. We have a good time. A little poison, a little nothing but a good time. You know, if I'm going, if I'm going down on the Titanic, and and uh, the Titanic is the country, in this uh, analogy, I'm that I'm the band playing playing <laughs> to the very bottom of the ocean. I'm gonna have a good time. But uh, yeah, anyway, reality radio. That's what we do here. The Mazda of Jackson phone line. If you guys want to chime in this morning, six zero one. Eight seven nine zero 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 two. Get out to Mazda Jackson today. Check them out online, MazdaJackson dot com. Check out the CX nine, gorgeous, gorgeous crossover vehicle. Of course, they have some some cars. They even have some two door coupes, which are really cool. As well as great financing options for every level of credit. Some good APR rates. Everybody's looking for those great APRs. They got them at Mazda of Jackson. Check out their website or just stop by and talk to Grady, Richard, the Carr family, and um, see maybe what they got that works best for you. Every purchase comes with a lifetime powertrain warranty as well as a 43-inch TV. Can't beat that. Located right there, Briarwood Drive, 55, frontage road. Mazda of Jackson. Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. 769-241-1944. Yeah, like Mr. Buddy said yesterday, man, I sure would love to hear more of y'all's voices. I love the text line. It's a great way to communicate with folks uh, throughout the day, throughout the show. But I would love to get these phones ringing just a little bit more here in the morning times. Maybe we need to have a smack off. Get some of the best smack talkers out there. OG Jim Rome style. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe have a little cash prize for the best smack talkers one day. I don't even know if we got any real smack talkers. I think maybe one, two. You need to step your game up. Old school talk radio. Loved it. Loved it. JT the Brick used to call him the Jim Rome show. Now he got his own show. <laughs> anyway, I did a live stream yesterday at the house. Made a lot of content yesterday. Did a two-hour live stream. Started at 12.30. Wrapped it up around 2.30. Got a lot of content out of it. Hit a lot of topics. <clears throat> uh, the most important one, or the biggest one, should I say, was the fact that the city of Jackson is at it again. They're virtue signaling to the best of their ability. And they're talking about removing the Andrew Jackson statue again. I have zero belief that they'll ever move that statue. I'm not saying they don't want to. I definitely think they want to. But... They ain't going to. They can't afford it. Also, you had to re- put all this paperwork forth with the Department of Archives and History. And you know, like I know, these people can't do anything if it involves anything beyond just making the initial announcement. Kim Wade told me that when I got started here. He said, man, you got to watch these folks. If it, re- if it involves more than one to two steps... To get the process done, they they can't get it done. It's just not how it works for them. Man, I had no 
idea just how right Mr. Kim Wade was. And this this Confederate statue thing is a great example of that. I'm trying to pull it up here real quick on my website. On the website. Let's see here. Clarence Ledger did a story and then, and I actually had to subscribe to the Clarence Ledger again yesterday. So I really fell on the sword for you folks. It was 25 cents for two months. I don't know how they keep open with a business model like that. I need to figure that out. Maybe I can start charging people for my content because if y'all will pay for this crap, mine's way better. All right. This from the Clarion Ledger. Who even knew that was still a thing? If Kingfish had done an article about this, he could have just saved me the 25 cents. We're going to fast forward just a little bit. We're going to get down here to the Mississippi Antiquities Law Explained. But first, I want to say this. This all started back the summer of 2020, post-George Floyd. They, they decided everything was racist, everything that was Confederate, or anything that represented old white people from the South, it had to come down. History be damned. And uh, that's when it was July 7th of 2020, the city council, minus Ashby Foote, he actually voted against it. The mayor and everybody else who was on the council at that time all voted to remove the statue of Andrew Jackson over from the, I don't know if it's the front or the back of City Hall, but either way, that road it's on, that little brick street down there, it's cl- it's been closed for years, so you can't even you can't even drive by the statue. Oh, Andrew ain't bothering nobody back there. You know the whole city is in fact named after him. And look, I'm not. I'm, I don't know what somebody has done to the microphone this morning. Spinning around in circles. There we go. <clears throat> look, Andrew Jackson founded the Democrat Party. Obviously, I got problems with Andrew Jackson. So, but I, you know what I don't have a problem with? History. I love history. And sometimes you have to see things that may offend you to be reminded of just how far you've come. Black folks, I'm talking to y'all this morning. You got, you, you got given a bad hand for a while. You got a good hand now. You got a good hand. Some of you are overplaying it, but you got a really good hand right now. You know, and every every now and then, you got to look up and you got to see something that reminds you just how far you've come. Wake up daily and see that damn statue and be like, man, you know, things may be rough today, but remember how bad we used to have it. I mean, I have to do that every time I ride by and see Obama Elementary. I had to remember that Obama was at one time the president of these United States. Every day I have to wake up and see Joe Biden is my president. And it really makes me appreciate how good I had things when we had Trump. You know, it's like when your sinuses are stopped up and you can't breathe and all you can think about are the times that your sinuses weren't stopped up. That's how I feel about Joe Biden. I like to think about it's the times that my sinuses weren't stopped up. And we had Joe. Well, I'm not Joe. I apologize, Daddy Trump. I'm looking over. We have a big Trump cut out here in the studio. I'm looking over. I'm apologizing. I called him Joe for a second. I apologize, Daddy Trump, my Lord and Savior. Prayers up. So back to the statue. Every now and then, you just need to leave history the hell alone. But all that aside, all that aside, you know how I know that statue ain't going to get moved? I'm about to read to you the requirements to get that statue moved, and then you're, then you're going to have to ask yourself, Billy Bob, Tyrone, whoever's listening to this morning, do you really think the city of Jackson is going to take those steps to get that done? Do you really believe that there's a single person that works in this administration, the free to land administration, that knows how to fill out that paperwork and get that done? You're gonna, you're, the, the answer to that is going to be, no, you don't. So 
understand that statue ain't going anywhere. So here we go. This is from the Clarion Ledger. Uh, Mississippi Antiquities Law Explained. To remove the statue, the city of Jackson must first file a notice of intent, including a detailed plans and specifications for the alteration of the project with the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, explains Sarah Warnock, the MDAH's Director of Public Relations. Well, that right there, we could stop right there. We could stop right there. When, when they said, file a notice of intent, including a detailed plan, and specifications for alteration. That's it. That, that, that's it. That's the whole thing. They're not going to do that. They don't have a single person there that can break that down and understand what that even meant. So strike one. That's probably strike one, two, and three, but let's get, to the, let's get on down. Under provisions of the Antiquities Law of Mississippi, see right now somebody at the Free the Land office, at the Diversity office at the Free the Land Administration, they're asking themselves, what, what antiquities mean? Under provisions of the Antiquities Law of Mississippi, is that racist? Old stuff in Mississippi. Chalk, chalk, is that racist? They said antiquities in Mississippi. Because the monument is publicly owned and part of a designated Mississippi landmark property, a permit from the Mississippi Department of Archives and History Board of Trustees is required prior to any alterations that would affect its historic character, Warnock said in an email. That's strike two. That's strike two. There ain't nobody gonna, no, nobody's going to understand how to do that either. To date, the MDAH, that's the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, has yet to receive a notice of intent from the city, Warnock said. But the plans to remove the statue are still very much in the works, according to city spokesperson Melissa Faith Payne. Here's where it gets funny. Here's where pretty much strike three comes in at you. We are definitely still planning on following through with the removal of the statue. It's one of the things our, (laughs) this is the best part. It's one of the things our planning director was working on before she left. (laughs) Of course she left. I would have left too. As you can imagine, the interim director is juggling a lot of things right now, but we expect to address the issue with the statue in the coming months. <laughs> the city plans to work with the Department of Archives and History to relocate the statue, Payne said, but no final decision has been made as to who will replace Andrew Jackson. Chalkway wants to replace it with Medgar Evers or probably his father. Ward 4 Councilman Brian Grizzell and Ward 6 Councilman uh, Aaron Banks, who are both black, agreed, the sta- that's the Clarion Ledger's wording I'm quoting, said that Ledger wanted you to know that they were both black, agreed that the statue needs to come down. Banks voted for removal in 2020. Grizzell was not yet on the council. Um... Banks continues to say, I do not think that someone responsible for the Trail of Tears Indian Removal Act should be highlighted. Ward 1 Councilman Ashby Foote, who is white, that's them telling you that, they feel like you need to know he's white, is still against the idea of removing the statue. He was the sole member of the council that voted against the measure back in 2020. I could, I'm not going to beat y'all all up here, but um, long story short, Chad White did an article yesterday over at magnoliatribune.com about it. Really good piece. I highly recommend going and reading it. Uh, I mean, really good piece on it. And he said that in so many words, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it seems to me like the city of Jackson plans on breaking the law to do this, and they're going to try to do it without permission, without all the proper permissions. And if they use taxpayer funds to do it, there will be an investigation and somebody will go to jail for stealing. So what they're planning on doing is stealing taxpayer funds to illegally remove a statue. Is what it sounds like to me. Because, as previously mentioned, they're not going to go through any of those steps that I just mentioned. That would involve doing something, quote unquote, the right way. And not a single time in the seven years that Chakwe Antarla Mumba and his merry band of free the land thugs 
have been in control here? Have they done anything the right way? So if you're assuming that this is going to get done by anything other than a pickup truck snatching that statue over, you would be wrong. Now, they could get their favorite subcontractor, a certain nightclub owner around here, who's allegedly also tied up in these indictments. Maybe they could get him to come do it for them. Furthermore, I believe they say it's going to cost around a million dollars to move this statue done right. Could you imagine the city of Jackson in its current condition, a third world bombed out hillhole under tyrannical, being, being led by a tyrannical regime of free the land thugs? Could you see, could you imagine them spending a million dollars to remove and replace a statue that, keep in mind, the road right now is impassable on? You can't even see it. When a huge portion of the red lights in the city don't work. Potholes everywhere. I could go on and on and on and on about all the things Jackson would be better off spending a million dollars on, a hundred thousand dollars on, or ten thousand dollars on, regardless of what it costs. Each intersection or each red light costs about thirty thousand dollars. And you're gonna go worry about removing a statue that sums up what is a priority to these people. More than anything, it is race above everything. They would rather suffer than have to see something historical in Jackson, Mississippi. Let's take a break. Phone lines wide open, 601-879-0002. What should happen with the statue? I feel like I know the answer. I mean, I, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall right down racial lines. The Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We will be right back. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. I just heard the little ad read there for... Acme Pizza and Daiquiri. Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's. Fan and Mart on the res, right there in front of the bowling alley. Open seven days a week, 4 p.m. to midnight. And uh, the proprietor, the head pizza chef himself, Chef Boyar Matthews, Mr. Chip, will be in here coming up after me, after me, 9 to 10 a.m. Mondays and Tuesdays, the Chip Matthews Show, one of the fastest growing shows here on the station. Glad to have Chip and his team, uh, Tim and Lindsey, uh, over here doing what they do, talking about roads in Madison County. It's very informative information there. Let's check them out, 9 to 10, Monday and Tuesdays. But furthermore, Acme Pizza and Daiquiri's. Get out there and grab some great pizza. I, I love that you guys are going to try to pig, pig, pig and tagging me in the pictures. I think that's awesome. I have uh, I got to get over there and get the pig, pig, pig again here soon. And maybe today, tonight. <clears throat> so 4 p.m. to midnight, they got 12 different specialty pizzas, nine different frozen daiquiris on tap. Try the dynamite balls, the best appetizers in all of the Tri-County area. It's fresh smoked pulled pork on site, wrapped around some cream cheese, deep fried drizzled with some sweet baby rays and they got some kind of dipping sauce i don't remember what maybe it's ranch or something like that it's phenomenal is what it is if you try one you know i don't know if y'all like me but i like to snack in the car before i get home because i want it as fresh and hot as possible because i want to scorch the roof of my mouth if you can eat one of those dynamite balls without eating all of them before you get home you're a better man than i am available for delivery carry out and dine in, live music on the weekends, never a cover charge, Acme, Pizza, and Daiquiri's. Fan and Mart on the res. All right, I want to say something else real quick before we shift gears. <clears throat> and we're going to read a few of your texts. If you take everything going on in the city of Jackson right now, the fact that half the elected officials are allegedly about to be under federal indictment, 
federal felony indictment. I don't think any of them, the mayor, allegedly three city council people, and the Hines County DA, who's not involved in the statue, but of course he wasn't supposed to be involved in economic development either, but here we are. Um, that's four, that's four people, allegedly, minus the, not, not counting the DA. They don't need to be making any decisions about moving statues or any Jackson business moving forward. There needs to be a moratorium on these people being involved in anything, especially once the indictments drop. I don't, you, I know innocent until proven guilty, but rarely do federal indictments drop that you're not literally just innocent until proven guilty because you're usually guilty when the feds drop indictments. Uh, they've got a 90 plus percent success rate for better or for worse. They have an endless budget. When they decide they want you, they get you. But say, it's more about the, the man they want to arrest than the crime they want to arrest them for. They'll show you the man, they'll show you the crime. I don't think they need to be involved in making any decisions. Let's take a call on the Mazda Jackson phone line. Good morning. Ooh, that's rough. Good morning, you're on there. I'm uh, sorry, man. We got a, We have a connection issue there. You must be driving on 49. Let's see here. Uh, pull back up the text message machine real quick. Michelle says, no, nope, that's a text from yesterday. Here, here we go. Unknown texture. Shouldn't Jackson be more worried about spending their time repairing the city? Repairing the city. Okay. Shouldn't Jackson be more worried about spending their time repairing the city they have destroyed? Forget moving a statue. Cut some grass. Fix some stoplights. Demo some of the dilapidated buildings. Why are they always worried about the wrong things? Free the land. Free the land. Free the people. That's why. <laughs> Free the land. Whenever, whenever you have to ask a question about like that, like why are they worried about this and they need to be worried about this, three words, free the land. Continuing. And I think the mayor's mind, and I think in the mayor's mind, all he's worried about doing, because he knows he's going to jail, he's trying to leave some kind of legacy, whatever legacy he thinks in his mind anybody would care about. And at this point, he'll probably put up a statue of himself. <laughs> Uh, yes, that, that, that fact check determines that is the truth. That is a fact. <laughs> you, my friend, are telling the truth. Blake says, here's a great idea. Take the million dollars they may possibly spend on the statue and invest it into police department so they can get more help and make the city safer. So here's what they would say about that. And I, I heard them say this recently, so I know that this is what they'll say. Well, what do we do when that million dollars runs out? Then it'll start costing us a million dollars because that's one-time money. So let's spend it on something really stupid. We need to, we need to spend this on some diversity, equity, and inclusion directives. <laughs> Roger, on the Guns and Gear text line, everyone who votes to move it should go to jail for stealing taxpayer money. Well, that's probably hell. Three three of the seven are are about to, in fact, probably go to jail for stealing taxpayer money. Well, I guess it's taxpayer money. It's corruption. The other, just lock up the whole smoke, stop lock and barrel. Unknown texture. I drank a six pack of them antiquities last night. Unknown texture. Battle of Nola, 1814. AJ formed a motley crew. Uh, Andrew Jackson formed a motley crew army, i.e. pirates, criminals, black folks, freed and not, and slaughtered most powerful army on earth, American exceptionalism. Yeah, man. Look, he did some good stuff. And Shad White got into a lot of the good things 
that Andrew Jackson did. That the the liberal, the angry liberal liberal left wing mob, the cancel culture mob, they never look at any of the good stuff. It's only the only word they have to hear is slave or racism or white. Nothing else matters once those words have been have been inserted into the lexicon. Period. It doesn't matter what they did. The only former racist that is allowed to operate with immunity is Joe Biden. He's the only, and, he ain't, and, and he's not a former racist, by the way. He, he was just much more open. He's the only one that's got a hood pass still. Everybody else got to go. Joe. Joe Biden has got a spell on these folks. I mean, I don't know if it's like a, you know how you can put an electric shock collar on a dog? So you don't have to have a fence and if it runs too far away, it's zzz, zzz. I think that's what Joe Biden's got on some of these folks. But if I don't vote for him, I ain't black. Zzz. I'm thinking about voting for Trump. Zzz. I ain't never seen nothing like it. He's cast a spell on them. Let's take a break. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back. We're going to shift gears before I get into singing Cast a Spell this morning. Because that's the only three words of that song I know. We'll be right back. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. Guys, Lakeland Glass and Tent. Get by there and see them today for all of your automotive window tinting needs, all your home and business window tinting needs as well. They can do it all. Lakeland Glass and Tint. Got a cracked windshield? Let them replace it for you. Did you know that every windshield replacement comes with a free rock peck repair card that's good for the life of the windshield? So if you're driving down one of these Mississippi roads or wherever else for that matter, you get a rock peck, get it over there. Whenever they'll fix that peck for you, they'll stop the stop the, the the crack, you know, and no charge. That just comes with every purchase. And we spend so much time talking about Lakeland Glass and Tint doing window tinting and vehicle wraps and ceramic coating. Sometimes we forget about the low hanging fruit that they are one of the largest windshield and automotive glass installers in the state of Mississippi. And when it, when it's in the name, I just assume you guys know. But I want to make sure we drive that home. That's right there on Lakeland Drive, lakelandglassintent.com today for a quote where quality matters. Locally owned, locally operated, the Expel Installer of the Year, two years in a row, right here in central Mississippi. I can't tell y'all how awesome that is. Um, If you understand window tent and brands and global brands, um, and Expel, of course, is American made. I believe it's all made in Texas, if I'm if my memory serves me correct, but uh, Lakeland Glass and Tent, right in Flowood, Mississippi, installer of the year, two years in a row. Congratulations to Jason and his full, whole team over there, and that's what that is over there. It's a team. It's family operated too. His mom, his brother over there, other people and their wives work there. I mean, it's a legitimate family, old school family business. Can't say enough good things about them. Check them out today. LakelandGlassIntent.com. I don't give out a lot of phone numbers. They got an easy one. 601-946-1000. The text message machine is on fire today, so I'm going to read a few more texts before we shift gears. Brent says on the Guns and Gear text line, the statue issue is low-hanging fruit, and that is all Jackson leadership has been able to pick and consume for two decades. Unfortunately, the constituents rank a moral victory higher than an actual community victory. So these are the types of issues that win votes. Just another example of the Gestapo and the the Gepetto and the Panache, the Pacino relationship. I guess I'm not familiar with that. Left has a has with its people. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's low hanging fruit for the. I'm telling you, Chalkway. He runs. He he caters to a base that it's black in front of everything. 
black before everything. Before money, except for his, of course. It, it, it's black above everything, and it's just it's it's bad business for the city. There's so many other important issues that blackness should not be the number one. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, not the most not the most important issue. Let's take a call on the Mazda Jackson phone line. Hey, I'm sorry, we're having phone problems this morning. I don't know what's going on with line one. It ain't allowing us to, uh, either everybody's calling with a bad signal or what, but line one ain't working, and I don't know how to get you to line two. But uh, keep calling. Maybe somebody with a good phone surface will get through. Um, but yeah. And what it does, by the way, is it alienates everybody else. You know, you've got a huge base of of tax slaves in Jackson over in Fondren and Bellhaven and Northeast Jackson that, frankly, aren't black. So this black before everything nonsense, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't help the black folks because you're really not moving anything forward. And it damn sure doesn't help the, the white folks who aren't responsible for it and don't benefit from it. It don't make them feel good on the inside. It's not a moral victory. It's not nothing. It's just low-hanging fruit to be like, look look at what I did for you. And people are just fed up with it. Let's try this one last time. Hey, you're on there. Good morning. Finally, somebody with a phone Thanks signal. Nice, buddy. Hey, buddy. Look, these guys, look, Chalkway don't care one thing about Jackson. The voters of Jackson don't care about Jackson. They just want to feel good. That's it. Look at Jackson. I mean, if they want to erect a statue, erect a statue of a toilet. Because I'm going to tell you how I feel about Jackson right now. If the good Lord don't give the world an enema, Jackson's where he's going to stick it. It is a shame and abomination, Jackson. And what are you going to do uh, taking down a statue? Are we going to change the name? Uh, and let's go back to disgraces. You know what Chakwe Lumumba Sr. did? Do you oh. remember? Oh, yeah. I, I do. Republic of New Africa. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they killed the cop. Joe Skinner's dad. And, and, yes. <clears throat> and I... I knew Mr. Skinner, good man. And look, I'm at this point in time. The citizens of Jackson deserve what they get. We need to put a 20-foot electric fence around it, build highways completely around it, and just shut it off. I mean, good Lord Almighty. I mean, if the citizens over there, and look, I'm saying it's 15 or 20 percent of the citizens that are awful, terrible people, but the rest of them go along with it. Now, let's get into these preachers in Jackson <clears throat> that shove this crap about the Democratic Party. And, you know, they're not preaching about Jesus and they're not preaching redemption and get up off your butt and do something. And I'm going to tell you something. I have some extremely wonderful friends and some of them even happen to be black and i do business with them and they get out and do it on their own they're not looking for set-asides they're not looking for anything else they're attorneys they're doctors plumbers air-conditioned guys and they like me they're working and the people in jackson are looking for a handout and that's all it is jackson is handout city and Dear God, are they forgetting that Andrew Jackson was a Democrat? I mean, let's face it. He's the founder of the Democrat. Let's build a shrine to him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sick of it. I I mean, I stay out of Jackson. I don't, I I hate driving I 20. I hate driving up 55. I'm armed to the teeth because I don't know that, you know, somebody's going to take a shot at me. <clears throat> and, you know, I just don't know the idiocy. That million dollars could be put to use 
And $30,000 for a traffic light is ridiculous. Why don't they repair the ones they got? Technology, there's, it's been so long since they repaired them that, that they've quit making parts for them. They can't be repaired at this point. But that, well, I imagine if they would hire some competent electricians. Look, I do a lot of business in Pearl, and I'm over there a lot. They got one guy, and I know not, it's not the size of Jackson, but they've got one guy that takes care of all caution lights. He takes care of traffic lights. And, uh, by the way, he happens to be black. Good mm-hmm. friend of mine. And if a traffic light goes down, I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, they text Mike, and Mike goes out and fixes them. Yep. I mean, uh, a, a snake dies from the head down, and Jackson is put, well, they put snakes at, in charge in the mayor's office, and it's never going to be any good. And I would, I wish the state would take it over and just have a fire. Fire everybody from the top to the bottom and start over with new hires. And it's just... Uh, People may hate me from this, but I've written Jackson off. I mean, completely. It is beyond help and beyond salvation. And that's about all I've got to say. Amen, brother. Thank you, buddy. Look, give them hell. Always. Let's take a break. We'll be right back to land the plane for hour one here on the Clay Edwards Show. Views on Google. Don't worry about what Mr. Radio Man says. Let the customers tell you how they feel about it. All right, so I, rarely do I ever get into, actually never have I before until yesterday, got into WNBA smack talk. I don't, you know, I used to be a big sports ball fan. Never, never a WNBA sports ball fan. Still not going to be a WNBA sports ball fan. But this Caitlin Clark stuff has now crept its way into the culture war. Because the BLM chapter of the Rainbow Supremacy, who's been running the WNBA for so long, all those studs out there, they're very upset that a white girl has now come in the league and is automatically out the door more popular and transcendent than any single player in this league's history. That's undeniable. And they're mad about it and they think it's, well, you know, well, well of course it's racism. And I don't, I don't agree. And look, frankly, I don't know if I understand the fuss of Caitlin Clark. They said she has pretty girl, pretty white girl privilege. I, I look, different strokes for different folks. I don't necessarily find Caitlin Clark attractive. Pretty white girl is not her privilege. Really good basketball player is her privilege. Um, not being gay, so therefore, and hey, if you're gay, it is what it is. Not being gay, so she appeals to a broader audience because regardless of what the rainbow supremacists continue to try to tell you, the LGBTQ movement, it still caters to a much smaller audience. That's just fact, Jack. Normal, straight people are still looking for people like them. We want representation, too. You know what I mean? I mean, at the end of the day, LGBTQ folks always talk about, uh, black folks always talk about, they want they want representation. They want people that look like them that they can look up to. Touche. Touche. So, so do straight white folks. I mean, we're no different. We didn't want folks that look like us, that we can look up to, that that our little Kaylee McKayleys and Hannahs and Bananas and uh, Ashleys, whatever silly names we've come up with now, Haley Bailey McKayley, for all of our little girls to be able to look up to Caitlin and think one day, if I'm six foot eight, and shaped like a bean pole, I too can be a WNBA player without having to be a lesbian. Well, finally, they've got somebody to look up to in Caitlin Clark. 
And that's made all the BLM rainbow supremacists like Brittany Griner and all that bunch upset. So I'm kind of conflicted on this, right? I, I am. I'm conflicted because I, I hate the I hate basketball. I don't watch anymore. I, I, I guess the Celtics won the championship last night. I only know that because I got a notification on my phone. I used to actually be a Celtics fan before the rainbow supremacists took over basketball, uh, male basketball too. I just can't watch it anymore. It's just a bunch of feminine men. It's got a bunch of feminine men playing men's basketball, and you've got a bunch of studs playing women's basketball. And both games suck worse for it. it it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, like Basketball is like trans come to life. All the girls want to be guys, and all the guys act like girls. What are we doing? So, I say all that to say, well, I got a couple things I want to say. Maybe we need to hijack the WNBA. As much as I hate it, maybe we need to hijack it and run a lot of the the current angry people who don't want to be there, let them go to Russia and play basketball for about 10 cold winters. And let's see how it works out for them. I, I think old Brittany Griner came back with a little bit better attitude. I mean, she just knocked up her wife and they're about to have a kid. Make that make sense. That's the American dream right there. Let's take a call. You're on the air. What's up, Clay? It's Elrod. Hey, Elrod. I, I, I got to solve right here for the whole thing. The, the transgender men can play in women's sports. Women's, uh, I say let Kaylin Clark put her in the NBA, man. Put her up there. Let her bang around with those big boys and see, you know, if, even though they're, they're effeminate men, they're still tougher than she is. And they will brutalize her on the court and will solve it once and for all. Please, your best player got sent up and couldn't hack it with our weakest men. So that's the way to solve all that. And then they'll say, you know, we're, okay, we get it. Okay, you're right. Man. And women well, are different. That women's basketball is not the same as men. Well, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark ain't the problem. She's just the she's the lightning rod in this whole WNBA. Oh, it's it's all these I, it's these it's all these angry gay the thing. It's all these angry black gay women in the WNBA. Who are stirring this pot? And then, of course, your ESPN race agitators. You know, like, they can't just accept that Caitlin Clark is popular. She's the Michael Jordan of the WNBA right now, and they're mad about it. It's that good basketball privilege, man. As, yeah. as it should be. The, the truth of it is, is people should be rewarded on their excellence and, and their superiority in a field. And no matter what that field is, let's go for that. Let's push excellence. Why are we trying to knock it down? That's the problem. It's meritocracy, man. Let the let the best ones ride. I mean, like you know, I'm joking about MJ, but man, she is she her and what's the other girl's name? Uh, Angel Reese. They got a yeah. chance. They got a chance to be. And I know this is not an original thought. I just agree with it. They got a chance to be Larry Magic for this league and make it relevant and put butts in seats. The, well, all, well, they do, but here I, I think. The, we're past that in today's media mentality. I think they're getting, they're they're Kanyeing us. They got behind the scenes and say, "Look, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get out here and play real hard ball, but let's act up. You know, get get mad at me. Do some stuff that will cause a scene and get us some ad time, some free advertising. And if you get on the news, that's free advertising, man. And so the more they get on the news, they have all these sportscasters just. Sticking microphones and say, "Oh, how do you feel about this situation? Oh my God, let's, let's blow it up huge so everybody knows how tense and and uh, combative this league really is." It, it, it's not. They're just trying to make it that way. You know, it's PR, man. It's negative PR is what sells today. I don't know why. Uh, I, 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 uh, I don't get it. <laughs> I do get it. All right, brother. They're trying to sell tickets, bro. That's all it is, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, but have, have a good one. I, look, I don't disagree that I think some of it is PR. 
I just think it's accidental PR. I, I don't believe some of these people are smart enough to play this 4D chess to make this happen. I, I just don't. But that's just my opinion. Uh, we got some video here that I want to play real quick con- concerning this. Because I, you know, I don't know who died and, and anointed Charlemagne the God as the voice of all black people. But he continuously pops up everywhere on all of these. You know, from a hip-hop DJ to being on all these national shows. And I just don't think he's got the depth for it. And I'll be the first to tell you, depending upon the topic, neither do I. But I like to kind of know my role a little bit. I'll be the first to tell you. I was like, I'm going to stay in my lane. You know, now if somebody wants to, like I did national interviews with Fox and Sky and all that on the Jackson water crisis. That was in my lane. But if they had called me to be on Tucker to talk about Medicaid expansion in Mississippi, I would have deferred. Not because it's not, not a good opportunity, but because I would have looked like an idiot. I would have been exposed. I don't, you know, you try to protect yourself a little bit and not talk about things that are above your pay grade. That's why we keep it very simple, meat and potatoes on the show. And that's why this show is successful, by the way. Because we keep it meat and potatoes. Country fried steak sells Every day at lunch. Fried chicken sells every day at lunch. Hamburger steak every day sells out at lunch. Meatloaf. The redfish with the fancy topping, that don't sell out every day at lunch. We're the country fried steak of Morning Talk Radio. Let's <laughs> did not think I would be making that analogy today. This is Charlemagne, the gold, on Bill Maher. It's only about a minute, and it's talking about the whole Caitlin Clark fiasco. And Charlemagne looks like an absolute idiot at the end. And it wasn't even on, and it wasn't because Bill was trying to make him look like an idiot. But you I think don't think it's Caitlin a problem Clark. that this, this young woman, there's so many examples where, I mean, Black people are very marketable. Well, ask yourself and she, this. Think, and she it? seems to have been indoctrinated into this. They don't see it as marketable, so it doesn't matter how hard I work. Well, I don't think minute. that's that's accurate or healthy. I well, mean, Asian. when people come into the league and they're like the biggest thing in college, isn't that a big deal? No, because Asia Wilson was the biggest thing when she came out of South Carolina. That's where I'm from. So she was one of the biggest things when she came out of South Carolina, number one draft pick. And she didn't get all of that. So what do you attribute that to? I, I mean, you th- you're saying that's racism. No, I'm not saying it's racist. I'm just saying that I think Asia Wilson has a point. And I think sometimes Asia Wilson was popular at South Carolina. She was not popular in a national setting. She did not transcend women's sports. She did not put 12 million people watching a South Carolina Final Four game. Just saying times when uh you know uh, black women say certain things we should listen and especially her because i'm not in her shoes i don't know but why why was serena williams such a big star because people like that it, they didn't not watch her because she was black right yeah okay so where are we with this i i don't, I, I don't know i'm just sitting back observing the conversation you know but i do think well, you're that, in the conversation what do you mean i'm not saying? a woman I'm not, <laughs> you're in this conversation i mean What he was hoping Bill said there was, yep, racism. He got exposed. He had to actually have his own, uh, his own thought, his own opinion, and he got exposed. And I don't dislike Charmelay to God. I I don't. Um, I thought he looked like a punk when Joe Biden told him, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. Because all I can imagine is what would happen was if Donald Trump told Charlemagne the God, you ain't black if you don't vote for Trump. Now they up here still stirring this race thing. But what Asia Wilson wasn't, wasn't as popular as Caitlin Clark when she come out. Why wasn't that? Because she don't put butts in seats. She doesn't transcend the sport. She doesn't resonate with young, white, straight women who are, I, as far, I, I, I'm guessing white people are the majority. I'm guessing there's more young white girls in America than there are young black girls. She resonates with them. It is what it is. 
Is Asia Wilson gay? Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Let's take a break. I'll figure it all out and let you know. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. This segment brought to you by Foremost Foundation and Construction Company. For foundations, Foremost uses innovative polyfoam technology that, with great precision, can correct and resolve sinking concrete quickly. They provide solutions for long term that can improve the ability of the actual soil to support the foundation or concrete slabs. Thanks to their specially designed rigs, they can drill and lift without the need for heavy excava- excavation. The team has decades worth of experience. They've tried all the old tricks. They know what works and they have weeded out the ones which don't. Expert foundation repair, polyfoam, polyfoam drainage, seawalls, retaining walls, foremostfoundations.com has you covered today. We just got some breaking news. Another left-wing nut job Democrat celebrity thought they were above the law and just found out nobody's above the law. Nobody. Justin Timberlake just bye, 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 hide his butt right to jail with a DWI in New York City. New York State, anyway. What an idiot. He's out on tour right now. I don't know if, what y'all know about the touring world, but you're in a bubble, especially when you're an artist the size of him, or he used to be really big. He's definitely not as popular as he once was. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of looking more like a in sync reunion or bust for Justin Timberlake. Finally, the rest of the guys, uh, may actually get to make some money again because Justin is having to come back to reality. Not that I was an in sync fan or anything, but, um, I am a nostalgia fan. So he's in New York. When you're out on tour, you've got multiple buses. You have tour managers, you have security. You have, at every show, you have a runner. That's people to take you wherever you need to go. You got a sprinter van, or you got a limo, or you got a private van, an SUV, something. I have never, in my year, I did concerts for 15 years. I've been in the music business, in and out of it, for since 99. I have never seen a major artist come to town and drive themselves anywhere. How did he manage to get a DUI while out on tour? Man, you can't fix stupid. That's that liberal privilege. Liberal privilege. Got him. So, uh, LOL, Justin Timberlake, glad nobody got hurt. Let's check out a few texts on the Guns of Your text line concerning the whole Caitlin Clark stuff. That is a, um, I've really tried to avoid that. Because it's a sports topic, but they've done, they've drug it, slap on over here into the culture war. And uh, we, we don't ignore stuff like that. I wouldn't be doing my job to ignore it. Unknown texture. Wait until Caitlin Clark gets a huge payday for being part of the mixed tag match at WrestleMania. Then they're really going to lose their minds. <laughs> I mean, she got like a $70 million deal from Nike. And I, that's the other thing. They're all mad, but. You know, these these idiots that are playing in the WNBA, these woke nut jobs, all they could think about is they, they, they can't understand a high tide lifting all ships. They're going to screw this up. She got offered way more money to go play in Ice Cube's B1G League, the big, big three league or whatever, big three. She got offered way more money to go play in that. She should have done it. Reagan can says, they are jealous of Caitlyn, her notoriety, and her endorsements. You're right. She is not pretty. She looks like a him. We are are so petty and childish. That's simple. Look, the Angel Reese girl, the black girl from LSU, she's a good-looking girl. She looks way better than Caitlyn. But she's got that me, 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 me personality, and it just doesn't, she just doesn't resonate with people. She needs Caitlyn more than Caitlyn needs her. Say that one more time. 
Angel Reese needs Caitlin more than Caitlin needs her. I know people don't like hearing it. WNBA needed a great white hope. So it can transcend past its current fan base. It's just like NASCAR needs a good black driver. Not named Bubba. <laughs> like, I like NASCAR. I like auto racing. I, I think it needs to be more diverse. You know the most diverse sport that I watch? Like truly a diverse sport is UFC. There's people from all over the world, every race, every nationality. And, bro, don't get me wrong. I'll pull for the Americans if I like them, but there's plenty of other people that I watch that, and I'm like, I hope hope the Brazilian wins. I hope the Russian wins. I just like, like, I want the best fighter to win, or I want the underdog to beat the best fighter. Like, I've never watched a fight and thought to myself, I want the white guy to win. Ever. But it's just, it's a very diverse sport because it's all about it's all about survival of the sickest. The strongest survive. Love it. Love it. And uh, we don't we, sports when sports is that, sports is great. Uh, now, on the flip side, I will tell you this is one of the reasons I don't really watch. Is one of the reasons I don't really watch baseball. Not enough American-born players right now. They're getting back to it. They're actually drafting college players again, and not bringing everybody over from overseas. But I think that's why there's no real big national baseball stars right now. It's too many people from outside of America playing America's game. See, the UFC is a global sport, so it's acceptable there. And you get the different cultures, and it's just cool. Like when, um, hell, even WWE, for example, they were over in Glasgow, Scotland this week. Last month, they were in France, and it's some of the most insane soccer-style crowds ever. And that's fun to watch. Like the different audiences, the different way they do things. Um, so I don't know. The NBA, it needed, it needed some diversity. It had none. The WNBA. The NBA, it needs a little diversity too. It has little to none. The white guys that play it are from, what, Luka Doncic? I mean, they're, they're all from European, Eastern European countries. It just ain't going to fly well here. I mean, I, I need you to speak English. You know, same with baseball. What, Acuna, the guy for the Braves that played here in Jackson? Amazing. Does he even speak English? Maybe he does. I don't know. But he could be he could I could I could pass him in the parking lot on the way to my car. I wouldn't recognize him. The only female WNBA player other than Caitlin Clark that I would recognize is the guy that plays in the WNBA, Brittany Griner. That's the only other that those are the only two I would recognize and I don't even honestly know if I'd recognize Caitlin Clark outside of her basketball uniform. She's that plain Jane looking. You know, everybody, everybody asks like diversity is on, they want diversity, but all black is, it, that's very diverse to them. They don't ever want like true diversity. They want to make sure black stays the majority. That's the kind of diversity they want. And that's just weird to me. Like, no, look, you need true diversity because you need representation. That's what they keep telling us. That's what the LGBTQ BLM Keep telling us we need diversity. We need representation, Clay. I just need to be able to see representation. I need a black Santa Claus. I need a black Jesus. I need somebody gay to be Superman. Superman needs to be gay, Clay. Because I need representation. No, we don't. (laughs) Well, then I need representation if that's the case. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. I'm probably not making sense to y'all, but I'm making sense to me. Tony on the Guns of Your text line says, WWE been doing it forever. Kamala was from parts unknown, probably Shreveport. Actually, Kamala was from uh, North Mississippi. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> um, Earl and Madison says the WNBA is the ultimate cut off your nose to spite your face scenario it truly is 
I hope they run Caitlin Clark out of there and they get back to being irrelevant. They're going to lose $50 million this year. And at some point, that DEI tax write-off that is known as the WNBA, the people who are scratching those checks are going to get tired of scratching those checks. And the little lesbian basketball association, they're going to have to all go back over there and play in Putin's Russia where people actually watch women's basketball. They better not smoke their vape pens either while they're there. Let's take a break, come back, and uh, we've got a whole other segment to go. We ain't nowhere near over. This is the Clay Edwards Show. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. We're here live on WYAB. Guys, Boykin Contractors, right there in Florence, Mississippi. They'll do any construction, roofing, remodeling, additions, repairs. They work all over the central Mississippi area. They're based out of Florence. They've got tons of satisfied customers, man. Look, you just go online, check them out on Facebook, Google, etc. Just put in Boykin, that's B-O-Y-K-I-N, contractors in Florence. You're going to find Bryce Boykin, a good Christ-centered man, runs his business with honesty and integrity. He's also licensed, bonded, and insured with the Mississippi Board of Contractors. All that, very important stuff. Man, you got any remodel stuff you need done around the house, you know, door sagging. I'm just thinking a little stuff here. Cabinets sagging. Need some new kitchen countertops, new cabinets, a deck, a deck. You know, I'm all about a deck, a lean-to over the deck or your back patio. Give Bryce a shout, man. Let him come do it for you. Get you an estimate, and uh, maybe you can work out. Get it in time to enjoy uh, the next six months of summer we got coming our way. <laughs> anyway, that's Boykin Contractors. Man, we appreciate them being a partner here on the show. I'm sure you guys have taken advantage of us having a hometown local guy as a general contractor. These are questions I get asked all the time. Like, Clay, do you know a good contractor? As a matter of fact, I do. I do. Bryce Boykin. Good folks. Go over there and can do any of it. Like I said, repairs, roofing, all of it, man. They can take care of each day. Boykin Contractors. All right, man. Let's uh let's dive into the the text machine here. Um let's see here. When you click on them, give it a few seconds. I'll, I'm not even, okay, I'm not doing that right now. Uh, let's see. Had a few texts I want to hit real quick. Blake said they were loud and clear on their view about Caitlin Clark. They all agreed they didn't like her because she is straight, white, and pretty. Man, I just don't see the pretty. But, uh, again, beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. Beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. Hey, do you guys remember? I just want to hit something real quick. Do you guys remember the trans activist that flashed its boobs at uh, on the White House? It's a guy, but it had boobs. It was uh, last year during their pride celebration. It's got a picture with Joe Biden and all that. You know, these people who insist that we see them, these people who insist that we acknowledge their existence, these same people who tell us that we're bigot, homophobe, transphobe because we don't want them in the restrooms with our kids. These people. Uh, Well, this particular one has now been arrested and charged with sexually assaulting at least five people. (laughs) The trans superhero that flashed its boobs on the lawn at the White House and has a picture with Joe Biden. I'm looking at it right now. This is the event you may remember when they put the trans flag front and center on the over the, the balcony at the White House. The American flags were secondary that day. Has now been arrested for sexually assaulting at least five people. Make it make sense, man. They're sexual predators. They want to rape your children. That's why they want in the bathrooms. I, we're not going to sugarcoat this anymore. We're going to get violent. Period. We're going to get violent. If y'all try this nonsense, we're done with it. 
just uh, I live on the internet, so I see some things you guys may miss. So I wanted to make sure you saw that. Oh yeah, my plot twist here. Also, I did see that um, they, they've arrested a city of Jackson employee. They haven't announced the name yet. I guess of uh, stealing insurance benefits money. Somebody in the HR department or something over there, or the benefits department. Uh, it was tough for Chalkway to get through that presser yesterday. I did watch it. Because in the back of his mind, he got to be real careful about what he says because you're next. <laughs> in my Goldberg voice, you're next. So I, I don't really care to, to dive into all that. LOL, Jackson. No. What I do want to talk about real quick, last few minutes of the show, we've got two minutes left. This is on OutKick. Plot twist, plot twist, KKK's David Duke joins woke college students in anti-Israel movement. Let's see here. I think we got a little audio of, of the Dukester here. I hope there's no cussing because I have not uh, cleared this. I'll have my finger on the button here. This is David Duke uh, supporting his comrades right here. So you're David Duke? Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. What brings you out here? This is the Groiper. You support Nick and his work and, and all the uh, workers that are out here and all the people that are working to save our country and save us from Jewish supremacism. Are you and friends Jewish with Nick? Genocide because we're being genocide just like the Palestinians. It's just a different form of Are you friends with Nick? I consider him a comrade in the okay. fight gotcha. for our people. So you're talking about Nick Fuentes. Uh, sound wasn't great on that. But he's supporting Nick Fuentes, who is a... And who is a hard, hard right, uh, I guess, I don't even know what you call him. Um, he, he's very anti-Jewish, anti-Semite. And uh, David Duke out there supporting him, you know. And uh, those are the same people that support Free Palestine. So you got David Duke on the side of Palestine with the woke college kids. The sides that, by the way, that's the same side that Ashton Pittman and Stacy and that whole bunch at the Mississippi Free Press, Donna Ladd, all them, that's the same side they're on, too. Why they're talking about being on the right side of history and stopping genocide and all this other stuff, that's the side they're on is uh, the side of Palestine folks. I'm just, hey, if we're, I'm saying if we're keeping score, let's keep the right score. A Klansman. A modern Ku Klux Klansman is on the same side as Ashton Pittman, Donna Ladd, and that whole crew at the Mississippi Free Press. I'm going to make sure I add that to the scoreboard. This is a Clay Edwards show. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards show. Guys, it was a fun show today. Uh, coming up next, you got the Chip Matthews experience. They've got a full cast of characters here today for that. It'll be on from 9 to 10. And I'll be back here tomorrow with Sean yurt Karan. Sean's been down at the courthouse in Hines County, that old rundown hellhole. Uh, they had to, he's been covering the, the Jordan Cummins, the St. Patty's Day massacre trial. Uh, they had to cancel yesterday's. Uh, proceedings because there was a leak in the courtroom directly on top of the judge's head. So things are going well as Hines County, complete dumpster fire, but hey, they, they can find some money to move a statue. <laughs> I know that there's a difference in Hines County and Jackson, but whatever, same thing, same thing. Y'all be blessed. Be sure to follow me on social media. I mean, I made five or six videos yesterday between TikTok, YouTube, Rumble, Instagram, at Save JXN, on X. I'm everywhere. I'm very active. Would love to have you guys follow me. Hit the share button. Buy a t-shirt. Go to buyfafo.com. Keep it tuned on here to WYAB all day. From 9 to 10, Chip. From 10 to noon, Jameson. Then Kim Wade. Close it out. 4 to 6. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 7 a.m.